Throughout this video, don't be surprised if you see some comments or some scans that say she doesn't have no power without her armor and stuff, especially in Rebirth. Yeah, it's like she'd be playing a mental battle with herself. No matter which continuity, she's related to Zeus in some kind of way. Even if there are some differences, there was even a time where she had to be empowered by Ares and be Ares' champion, become the earthly embodiment of the god of war. Sometime in her continuity, she actually got a strength increase factor because, you know, Ares thrives off of more war. So he, she let the power of Ares thrive inside her more when she got angry in different situations like that. So just keep all that stuff in mind. Let's talk about the strength of legacy characters. You got Superman and you got Superboy, Green Arrow and Roy Harper. And the same goes for characters like Wonder Woman. She has her legacy type character. Whether we're talking Donna Troy, a character I have a video about on the channel already, or Wonder Girl. Donna Troy is pretty awesome, so check out that video as well. Despite her being a Wonder Woman centric type character, her and Wonder Woman actually don't agree on something. Kind of makes for interesting conversations. Can't have an echo chamber up in here. I'm talking Cassie Sandmark. She's one of those characters that's very similar to Wonder Woman, so she has similar gear, and even her own lasso. She has super strength, super speed, super enhanced reflexes, and similar stuff like that. Cassie spent her time at a museum like this getting into trouble, aka being a bad butt type of kid. You know how kids be being acting busy and stuff. She's technically not the first Wonder Girl. It was Donna Troy, which I got a video about on the channel. Yeah, her mom actually worked at that museum, actually met Wonder Woman. She was obsessed with Wonder Woman and even wanted to help Wonder Woman, but there was a problem. She simply didn't have any superpowers, so she wanted to help Wonder Woman, so she put on some special gear or one could say sandals the sandals of Hermes so even though she technically didn't have superpowers this kind of helped her be able to have superpowers to be able to help out in a ways to where she wouldn't be necessarily dead weight yeah even though she wasn't still a match for Doomsday though Doomsday clone in this particular occasion with Wonder Woman she was still no match for Doomsday even though she had the gauntlets of Atlas multiplying her strength like crazy her being a fangirl basically led her to fighting in different occasions with adventures, like in this occasion with the K, thanks to the gauntlet and the Hermes sandal. But eventually, this type of stuff would eventually get old to the point where one day she was like, well, I think it would be kind of nice to get actual superpower and not necessarily have to rely on gear, if you know what I mean. Luckily, to her surprise, she was able to, hey, Zeus, can you give me actual superpowers as a favor? And that's how she got actual superpowers. She's one of those characters where it's not what you would think. She didn't really fit in that well and didn't get along with the kids at first. Because of her high status as Wonder Woman S type character, it was hard for her to find a school to go to. Yeah. Zeus is actually her father in this post-crisis era. Even though this was supposed to be classified information, she was able to figure it out on her own because she's actually pretty smart. Yep, more information about that. She's related. When it comes to Wonder Girl, Cassie Sandsmart, you can read all the stuff about her here. Comics has this pattern of retconning, whether I'm talking about the old stuff about her, like during the post-crisis era or the new rebirth stuff is kind of very similar, no matter which continuity, you know, just slight differences here and there. An example will be on how post-crisis Zeus is her father, but in newer stuff, they kind of change that quite a bit to where she's the daughter of this guy named Lennox, one of the many children of Zeus. So she's technically still related to Zeus, but not just directly under him though. Like instead of being the daughter, she's the granddaughter. You know, little differences like that with retcons, new continuities, rebirth, difference between post-crisis. Her father had left them at a very young age. They even go as far as implying that she'd have been way more powerful in this continuity if the father had raised her. Hey, Grandpa Zeus. In the newer continuity, Cassie's grandfather is Zeus. You got Cassandra Sandmark in the newer Rebirth, New 52 type stuff. Her name is Wonder Girl. She's the granddaughter of Almighty Zeus. But on Earth, they have come to know her as Wonder Girl. She's the niece of Wonder Woman, a warrior true, youngest member of the Pantheon, apparently. Let's get it. Her and her mother traveled the world from dig site to dig site, becoming archaeologists like on some Nathan Drake Uncharted Tomb Raider type stuff to find different treasures. Yeah, all this kind of cool Indiana Jones type stuff in this continuity. See the differences between the two, even though it's a lot of similarities. You'll be surprised on all the different adventures she's went on, fighting alongside other legacy type characters like Teen Titans, Robin, Nightwing, Beast Boy, Superboy, Starfire cyborg raven before i even get started talking about her physical strength speed and all that supernatural stuff when it comes to raw skills she's actually very skilled kind of like how wonder woman's a powerhouse but she has fighting ability to make her versatile to where she wouldn't be dead weight if there's a scenario that does come down to just her skills say if somebody has equal stats to you but they can't fight as good as you that can be the equalizer I will admit, it is nice to see characters that are strong actually have actual fighting training to sharpen their strength even more. In this occasion with Superboy, you can see the skill gap on how you try to attack her and she parries it like it ain't nothing. Like, what are you doing? Kind of embarrasses him here. It's not always about strength. She believes in hard work when it comes to just training. She's kind of, she kind of got that Amazonness in her at this point. I'm not even going to lie. Cassie has some of the sickest gear when it comes to battle suits. 
She has this suit called the Silent Armor for one. This is old armor and it's a magical alien armor made to fight against cosmic S-type beings, Raven's daddy-like Trigon. Trigon always interacts with these young Teen Titans members and Cassie's been a part of Teen Titans, stuff like that. It was forged by ancient mages, passed from warrior to warrior, generation to generation. That's why all these blasts from Trigon, it's able to eat all of this assault. The armor was passed years later to another, then another after her. Another is like a line. So Cassie has some pretty durable or incredible gear in newer continuity stuff because it was built and designed to fight Trigon's forces. On top of the standard stuff of you know her having super strength, being able to fly and all that good stuff and her plethora of abilities, her gear also allows her, she can give herself actual little baby force fields if she needs to to block bullets and stuff. I've already mentioned it, but she's in the archaeology type stuff like in hidden caves doing some Indiana Jones type stuff. That's when she stumbled across the ancient silent armor as you can see right here these war bracelets they were made to work with the silent armor this is one of her most epic outfits right here though i gotta admit and right here you can see a lot of lore about the silent armor that you would like to probably know silent armor requires an amazing amount of willpower to control it because it's kind of living one could say stuff like this kind of implies it has its own personality and that's pretty much how she got her standard gear the person she got the armor from ends up passing and gets Rocks crumbled on him, but she survived. She's been fighting this thing inside of her all this time, this silent armor. Her gear, like the war bracelets, think of them like spider sense. They will turn on if somebody's like trying to come after her. She even remarks on how they automatically turn on when somebody's coming to after her. You can get an idea of how strong this armor is, even if it's not necessarily being used by her. Other beings had the armor for a little bit. The silent armor has its own tendrils all around it, even if she's not necessarily using it. And it is a tendril, something that listens to only her, a task it will only do. So if you steal her armor, she can just tell a tendril to defeat you or stop you and it will not end until it stops you. One could say the silent armor can make like little clones to fight the entire Teen Titans. But these little minion clones that were made out of the silent armor end up vanishing when the armor is placed on the true wielder of this armor. <laughs> so she can endure this burden, this curse. So it's a double-edged sword, but she can handle it. When the silent armor is safe inside of her once again. It's still more hexy stuff this armor can do. Silent armor like for example the lariat. If she allows it it siphons the life essence of anyone it touches. Hexy type stuff to drain you. And the thing about this armor it actually drains her too. But thanks to her physiology she can resist it a lot better than other beings. She has an invisible armor she wears that makes her unique. She actually got a weapon. A weapon used by Kronos to castrate and depose his father Uranus. Yeah, a lot of Greek lore type stuff. It's kind of accurate in DC like that. It's made of flint adamantine. They used to call it the diamond blade. Zeus made the blade appear in her hand. It's kind of a common thing for Wonder Woman-esque type characters to have a blade or use a blade. Especially this is like I say, an overpowered blade. She's not afraid to use it in battle to do what she got to do. But yeah, she's strong enough. Even if she's not necessarily equal to Wonder Woman, she's not like a gazillion times weaker. But she was able to stop Superboy from being pulled into a black hole to shore power. But yeah, already she's ridiculously strong. And it was like a legit black hole level theme because speedster type characters that are fast, fast enough to run, outrun the pull of a black hole had to do stuff like this to it and stuff. She even got in a tussle with Major Force and punched him here, doing stuff like breaking chains is easy because she was given strength by Zeus. Look how she does punching bags with her punching power. She's at least a low level Kryptonian tier or medium tier because Superboy clones. She's gotten entanglements or scuffles with and it's not a one time thing when it comes to squaring up with Superboy clones. She's so strong because of her new strength. Some beings even get fearful. She's strong enough to stop a car accident. When she was possessed, you can get an idea of how she compares to other beings with fighting the Titans or smash some with the tree right there. And metal robots, y'all get messed up that easily. She was able to do work even while she was weakened, apparently. I love when they can find an excuse to have the character mind control or possessed by other beings to see how they would fare against people that usually wouldn't fight. Stomper, what's good? Your foot gets messed up. Androids that are apparently, quote unquote, nearly as strong as the original, apparently, which I highly doubt they're really the equal to Superman, but she takes care of them to show that she's no weakling yet again. Hey, Jets, I have the strength to stop it. Her own strength. You can't be considered a young type of powerhouse without fighting Mammoth at least once or twice. She will use your body to hit you against other folks. And if you're a deity, she can break the grip, even if you're a deity, showing that she's strong as crap too saying gods are always overrated. In newer S-type comics, you can see her strength when you got all these powerful people trying to restrain her, like speedsters. Like, it's just little occasions like this, interacting with, you know, the youngsters. She even had the nuts to pull up on Trigon and punch him. She's still a pretty brutish type of character. In newer stuff, to prove she's super strong, 
Look how she kicks the living crap out of beings like Despero. Heck, even knocking a tooth out. Despero is the type of character I've done a video about on the channel that is a constant threat for the super heavyweights of DC like Martian Manhunter or just the league in general, whether it be Shazam, Green Lantern, it's always a struggle for the powerhouses to take him on. Yet you can see her power here, thanks to her demigod physiology and newer continuity. You can see more evidence of it here, how she crutches the ground using her lasso to sling him. To show that I'm not trolling, he even says I fight Justice Leagues, not some half-formed. She says I don't give a crap about the ego. Overpowered to where Despero was even looking sleepy, this might actually be her most flashy feat of all time despite it being only a battle feat. If you know how strong Despero is, you know this is insane. In newer stuff, she's able to fight Superboy to the point he even said I have not been punched that hard in my entire life to show her status always in the bruiser tears with standing attacks from him and it's not done she does this showing her striking power to do this with his facial expression to cause all of this collateral as you can see she endures blasts from him durability wise to show she's never been a featherweight of course holding cards is nothing no matter which continuity she has her own lasso kind of like wonder woman it's a little different she kind of has a lasso that can electrocute you lightning strikes all she has to do is get angry that's an interesting ability her lightning lasso has think of her lasso having a anger strength increase factor the angrier she is the mightier the lasso will strike you you can see it in battles like this, how she electrocutes Garg with the lasso lightning. It works against Superboy tears, Kryptonians, this type of lightning. So it lets you know it does work on heavy hitters. Make out, make out. It can even go as bad to the point where it can vaporize being. If we're talking about her raw fighting speed or just raw speed in a straight line, she's like one woman in that regard too. I mean, she's fast enough to catch air crafts. She's able to dodge heat vision flying to the top of the atmosphere at a very short amount of time. It would be weird if she fought all these Kryptonian tears and didn't have fighting speed. I mean, if she was fast enough to save Kid Flash on this particular occasion from Gog. Respectable. Reacts to these arrows mid-flight. She's fast enough when it comes to fighting speed to deflect bullets. Avoids attacks from Captain Cold and Heat Waves attacks. Yeah, agility. She reacted and deflected blasts from Superboy Prime's heat vision. Part of this is thanks to these braces being extra durable. Yeah, light speed stuff she can deflect. When stuff can cut through reality, <laughs> she can still block bull crap like this. One could say a basically evil version of Wonder Woman she can take attacks from, energy blasts, beings that are possessed by Starro, sequence stand punches from, big behind beings like this. Supergirl's even punched her and brushes it off, catches herself after the hit. Lexus Sue, she's what stood attacks from. It would be weird to be a Wonder Woman-esque type character and not fight Donna Troy or Wonder Woman herself at one point in their career, like in this occasion. Her and Donna Troy scuffle it out and it showed that she's not that far behind her. And stuff that can blow up buildings like missiles, she can withstand attacks from. Silver Swan screaming, she can get back up afterward. When she interrogates you, it's scary because she will literally fry you with the lightning lasso. And she will get pretty brutal when interrogating you. She gets angry quickly, but it kind of matches with her lore of her lasso being more dangerous, the more angry she is. So I guess it kind of helps out in the long run. Just like her punching power, her durability is extra good just because of her demigod, demigoddess physiology. She can withstand just about as much as she can dish and then keep on fighting for an extended amount of time. Yeah, it's pretty common. I would say she's around the Superboy-esque range. I wouldn't necessarily say she's like equal to Superman or nothing. She's a bit below that, but she's not gazillions of times weaker at the same time. But there is a gap, if that makes sense, because she's young. And she's not necessarily Wonder Woman. They can't have her outshine Wonder Woman, obviously. So yeah, she has to be below them by quite a bit just from lore and just right in 10. But I will admit her gear is some of the best. Like that armor, that silent armor is really sick. That could be just me. She should technically be a planet buster by default just because planet busting in DC for the medium powerhouses or low powerhouses are just nothing compared to these characters at this point. I know we haven't actually seen her do it. There's no reason to believe she couldn't considering how low of a feat that is actually in DC comics when it comes to the powerhouses. I mean, the powerhouses move stars and hold the universes on their back. And if she's not gazillions of times weaker, she might not be able to do the exact same feat. But you can't go from universe holding level of power to only being city level when you're somewhere in that range. You know what I mean? Even if it's like, yeah, but that could be just me. But before I get going, you have to respect Wonder Girl no matter which era. But I also got to give a quick shout out to those that have took the time to donate to the channel. Respect her. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.